Hello, welcome to Getting There From Here, A Path to Preserve Digital Collections. I'm Carrie May, Digital Archives and Preservation Librarian. And I'm Clinton Graham, the Systems Development Lead. We're going to be providing an update on a part of our work in digital preservation for the University of Pittsburgh Library System. This briefing follows up on our spring of 2021 briefing, Improving Stewardship, Opportunities, and Tensions. In that briefing, we spoke about the ULS investing in Preservica to provide full digital preservation for our archival assets. We also spoke of our intention to take steps towards centralizing the digital assets we steward across diverse repositories. This briefing will describe the work we have done to create our first systems integration. We can now export archival quality assets from our Islandora instance and use a customized index to secure them in Preservica. Though not truly dark, our archive is designed mainly as a secure storage for our assets. These assets are received with varying levels of metadata from none to an abundance, but we use a standardized set of basic actions to ensure all assets can be recognized over the long term. Most of this processing is completed manually. In short, we base our work on a finding aid created by a collection archivist to apply a specified arrangement and basic description to assets inside Preservica. When creating the Island or Ingest, we had hope of automating some of this work and Clinton led the way. Preservica offers a value add service to clients called Accelerated Success to assist them with their large or complex preservation work. We were interested in taking advantage of this for capturing our Island Dora based digital collections. I imagined a tool that would take the output from Island Dora 7 and convert it into a format which Preservica uses for ingest. Preservica supports the open standard Bagit for package exports, and Preservica supports bulk import via OPEX and PAC standards, so a tool massaging Bagit into PACs would be ideal. When we proposed this, Preservica clarified that Accelerated Success was meant to help clients do things, not to make tools. We could use our Accelerated Success contract time for them to ingest on our behalf, but not to create a generic reusable tool. So we described the bag output and the select components from the bag that we were interested in capturing, and Preservica built a process that they could run to perform the work. And then we described the source data, which is about 56 terabytes across 260 conceptual collections. And Preservica will do anything for a client, but apparently they won't do that. I don't blame them well, with rate throttling. The ingest is going to be about a year of part-time work. So in the end, we got the tool that Preservica built, though it is currently locked into some hyper-specific assumptions which we are using for our migration. For me, the lesson learned here was that even if a vendor is taking reusability off the table, in the future, I'm gonna sneak it back on. Don't tell Preservica, but the next time I'm asked, which metadata files do you want to include or exclude? Or how do you want to map this hierarchy of objects? Instead of actually answering the question, I'm going to respond, oh, I don't know. That could change from run to run. So we better make that a configuration option. The reason that this is a year of part-time work is twofold. There are a lot of manual operations and there are arbitrary limits on the rate of ingest. So now we have the tool and we have our work cut out for us. For each of the 260 collections, IT staff needs to check with our digital collection specialists to get the green light for that collection to be re that that collection is ready for export. That is, the collection is in scope for preservation, it's finalized, etc. Both the export from Islandora and the transformation of the exported content from Bagot to Pax are operations which are manually initiated and for which IT staff checks for the all okay message in the logs at the end. It's a manual process to remediate any errors like data inconsistency, and then to rerun the process if there isn't that all clear from either of the processes. 
The other huge concern that I had going into the work was the arbitrarily, arbitrary throttling of 500 gigabytes per ingest and 750 gigabytes per day. I have no interest in needing to manually break apart the large ingests. Uh, while we do have 56 terabytes spread over hundreds of collections, many of the collections are very, very small, and several of them are terabytes in size. Fortunately, uh, the Preservica ingest automatically breaks down the large ingest for us. So practically, Carrie and I just need to keep in touch regarding whether the total work across all the ingests is likely to exceed our tenant's daily limit. When the ingest process completes, work moves back to Carrie's team for post-ingest processing. Once assets have been ingested using this workflow, there are a few more steps to standardize them inside our archive. And these steps can be carried out or have to vary between each group that's received. But let's just look at some examples. This screenshot shows groups ingested from Islandora. The folders with collection dot number titles are to untouched groups. Those are brand new. The two folders at the bottom of the list have been reviewed and updated with the archival collection number. And the Audubon folder at the top has also been updated, but this is an example of a group that's not actually an archival collection. No matter how the folder title is updated, the Islandora collection number is retained in all folders and assets for that group. This is done with a set of selected Dublin Core fields that we apply. We use a bulk edit capability to update the description field to include that original number, and that preserves a piece of the archival trail. Standardizing groups of assets from a single collection that has a finding aid typically goes quickly. This is the finding aid for a group ingested from Islandora. This shows that same group post ingest inside Preservica. Note the series folders have been automatically created on ingest but some assets remain unsorted. This can happen if assets have inconsistencies in information. A more detailed look shows that sub-series folders have also been created and existing metadata has been applied to assets. Looking closer at a single asset shows that three types of metadata have been harvested. This extensive information is only applied to the asset itself. Related XML files that we receive do not have any metadata automatically applied. So those records benefit highly from our selected DC fields that will ensure that they continue to have context. Groups we receive that do not have finding aids require a bit more research and possibly discussions with collection archivists to define and create that arrangement. For example, this is a recognized accession, but it has no finding aid, and so no defined arrangement. When that group is received in Preservica, it looks like this. Therefore, before post-ingest process it can take place, I'll be chatting with our university archivist for input on an appropriate long-term arrangement. Whatever steps needed post-ingest, we can feel confident that the assets available are the complete group because Clinton and his team can verify each ingest. There are a lot of points of explicit and implicit trust within the content transfer. There's no way that we can have human verification of the full scope of the content. And in fact, this process is highlighting instances where the original repository has historic data issues, like missing identifiers in the Dublin Core metadata or missing preservation or access files. Fundamentally, we want to know, was the export successful? Was the transform successful? Was the ingest successful? And finally, can we crosswalk to show parity between the two systems? Did we capture all of the in-scope objects held in Islandora? Bagit gives us a manifest, checksums, and the files for metadata and digital objects. So we, re we enumerate each digital object file and mark it as exported in the source system, noting the time of export. So if an in-scope object does not have that export date, or if the content has changed since the export date, we can flag this as need for re-export. The Bagot digital objects can be complex, both 
with the conceptual object and then with the components of the objects, such as pages for a paged object. So there's a lot of implicit trust in the transformation script from Preservica, presuming that the script is copying all of those components from Bagot into the OPEX packs. As an advantage here, the SHA-1 hashes from the Bagot manifest are passed through unexamined into the pack structure. So in that next step, whatever Islandor said the checksum ought to be is what Preservica is going to receive and validate for the ingest. We'll also revisit the question of whether the transform captures all of those components in a later slide. The Preservica PAX ingest incorporates its own manifest and the received SHA-1 hashes to validate the success or to warn of errors. So Preservica's promise is that exactly what the ingest process was given is what will be per permanently stored. And any variance in the manifest versus the delivered files or in the checksums provided versus the checksums calculated will cause an ingest failure, which has to be evaluated and remediated. So now we can return to the question of crosswalking between Preservica and Islandora for validation. We know that we've captured everything we received, but did we also receive everything we sent? Preservica provides an ingest report listing the objects which were successfully ingested including both their source identifier and the new Preservica identifier. We process that report into another metadata update within Islandora. For each object listed in the report, we record the Preservica identifier in the object's metadata. So now in Islandora, we have the timestamp of when that object was exported, the identifier which Preservica has assigned to that object, and we can use those two fields to report on any discrepancies such as objects which were exported, but not ingested. There is, however, one blind spot which we're still working to resolve. The Preservica ingest report only describes conceptual objects, not the actual individual components within the conceptual objects. So we know the identifier for a book, but the book's pages aren't included in the report. As an accommodation for this, we plan to use the Preservica API to count the number of bit streams under the Preservica representation and to compare that count with the components which were marked as exported from the same Islandora object. If Islandora reports that n components were exported and Preservica reports that n components are present, we'll consider that to be round trip validation. For a full cycle, this looks like Islandora exporting the bag with the manifest, the digital objects, the, the checksums transformed into packs. The object files are denoted as exported in Islandora. The packs is ingested in Preservica. The CSV report is crosswalked back into Islandora for the conceptual objects. And an API-based comparison can check to see if the right number of child components are present. Despite the special attention required by some groups ingested, Processing assets from Islandora can still be done with terrific efficiency. As we continue to work through these groups, we also continue to refine our practices and improve our processing strategies. Thank you for watching our briefing, Getting There From Here, A Path to Preserve Digital Collections. If you have any questions, please reach out anytime.